Hello, my name is Anthony Bretodeau. I'm from Rennes, France. And today we're going to see together how we can use Galaxy to annotate the genome of a, of a bacteria. So if you go to the training.galaxyproject.org, you can go to the genome annotation section where there are several um, slides and tutorials to annotate different kinds of data. And here we go to the genome annotation with Proca tutorial, which is specific to prokaryotic uh, genomes, so bacteria mostly. So I just click on the enzyme icon here. Okay. Um, so I will run this tutorial on a usegalaxy.eu uh, instance, which is the European instance of Galaxy. For this tutorial should also work on other instances like the Australian one or the, or the, the main one at usegalaxy.org. So, uh, as you can see, the title of the, of the tutorial is Genome Annotation with Proca. So Proca is uh, the software, the main software we will use that will take the sequence of the genome we want to annotate and look into the sequence to find uh, all the features it can find, which means mostly genes, but also things less common like uh, tRNAs or ribosomal RNAs, if it founds. Okay, so it runs in two steps, Procar. The first step is running uh, another tool, which is Prodigal, which will uh, try to find, to identify in the sequence, all the genes that are coding for protein. And then the second step is to use all these predicted uh, genes to, to, func to add functional annotation to them by comparing them to uh, known sequences from other organisms that are, that are available in a, international databases. So the first step for this tutorial is to import the data. So as you can see, we will use this file, which is available on Zenodo. So you just have to copy uh, the URL of this file and then go into Galaxy, create a new story if you haven't done so before and just upload this new file by clicking here pasting the, the URL. You can say that it's a FASTA file here and click on start. Okay, so now the file is uploaded to Galaxy, it's green. You can have a look at it by clicking, clicking on the eye. As you can see, there are several uh, uh, sequences which uh, our DNA, of course, and each one is one of the scaffold that was assembled from the from a short reads, probably. So it's the genome of a Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, and, and that's it. So we'll first rename the data set to make it more obvious what it is, or we can even write genome like this save okay and if you look at the tutorial now the next step is to run proca and just select the file we uploaded before so we'll do it proca is here it's in the annotation section and we select the genome data set which is the only one here and there are a few options after that we will just leave them as is. Um, and so we just execute like this. Okay, now we just have to wait. Okay, so Proca has finished working. So the first thing we can look uh, is the TXT output here. So as you can see, um, there are six contigs that were analyzed that were in the original uh, FASTA file, uh, which made uh, around uh, 180,000 uh, bases. And Proca was able to find 149 proteins and genes 
coding for proteins, and two tRNAs. So that's the general uh, statistics. And if you look at the GFF output here, and uh, if you look at it like this, so GFF is a file representing an annotation on the genome. Each line represents a feature position on the genome. The first, uh, the first column here is the name of the contig where this feature is. The second column is how it was uh, found. So here it's Prodigal, which was launched by Proca. The third column is CDS, which means coding sequence. And the fourth and fifth uh, columns are the start and end position on, the, on this uh, contig. So in this line, you can see that Prodigal found the CDS between position 511 and 750 on this contig. Um, some software can make a, can write a score corresponding to this feature. Here, Prodigal doesn't do it. Uh, but here you have the strand colon, which means this uh, CDS was found on the forward strand of the genome. Okay, and then on the rest of the line after that, you have a, a lot of uh, text written, and every time it's a key value pair. So you have an ID, which is for this gene is KCBFIMOI. 0001. So this is a unique ID of the gene on this genome. After this, you have the, myth, the method how it was uh, predicted. So it's a NAB initial prediction. So it's a software working only with the sequence of the genome. That's what means ab initial prediction by Prodigal in this version. And then you have the locus tag, which is quite similar to the ID. And product, which means uh, what what is the name of the protein which uh, is uh, uh, translated from this gene. So here we only see that it's an hypothetical proteins, but for other genes like the number five here, we have more details. So we have a, a name for the gene, which is BLE. We have other external references. We'll uh, present this a bit later. And we know that, that this gene is probably a bleomycin resistance protein from comparison with uh, external sequence databases. Okay, so we are happy with this GFF. If we look at the other um, results of PROCA, you can look at the gene bank file here, GBK. So it's just the same information as GFF written in another format, which is widely used in, a, in an international data, databases. So you should have the exact same uh, content as the GFF. And if you look at the tutorial, they say here that the FAA file contains the protein sequences of the gene annotated. So if you look at it here, you can see that each gene with, its, with uh, the ID coming from the GFF as a corresponding sequence of the protein. So you can, you can find the 149 sequences here. And the last one is the FFN file here, uh, which is, if I remember well, yes, the nucleotide sequence of each gene. So not the protein sequence, but nucleotide. Okay, that's great. Mm, so these are text files which are somewhat hard to read. You don't want to print them, but you want to visualize them a, a, a little bit uh, um, to make it a little bit more visual. So in Galaxy, you have a tool which is named JBrowse, like this, <clears throat> which is in the graph display data section. And if you click here, you can select the genome of the of the species we are studying. So it's the first uh, data set we imported at the beginning, the genome here. You can also select, as I said in the tutorial, the FNA output of PROCA, which is the SEM, which is here. So if you compare this one with this one, it's the same data. 
So we come back to JBrowse, we select in genome from history. We can take, as is said, FNA in the tutorial if you want. Then we know it's the genome from a bacteria. So we tell JBrowse that the genetic code of this species is bacteria uh, here. And then the next step is to add tracks. So we had first a track group, which we will name annotation, for example. And then an, an annotation the track here, which will be the GFF file that was generated by Proca. And we'll leave everything, uh, all the option uh, as in the defaults, and we execute. OK, so JBrowz has finished its screen here. So I can preview it here with the eye. So you see the genome browser displaying inside uh, Galaxy. But for a little bit of comfort, I'm going to open a new tab here. And we can see the full page um, for JBrowz. OK. So this is a genome browser, which is named uh, JBrowse. Here on this part of the screen, you have represented the sequence of a genome from position 300 to 455. And here you have the list of all the contigs of the genomes we are viewing. So we have the full length of this contig here, and we have zoomed on this part of the contig and we are displaying its content here. If we zoom a little more here, yes. So we have colors as before, but now we, are, we have letters on these colors. In the middle here, you have the sequence of the genome. So the forward uh, strand here and the reverse strand just below. So the six frame amino acid translation here. So the three first one for the forward strand so this TAT sequence means uh, tyrosine uh, amino acid. And the three uh, below correspond to the reverse strain. OK, so we can switch like this from uh, this contig to a bigger one, like this one here. And on the left, you have a list of tracks that you can show. So we added one. You have always the reference sequence track that you can always show. But if you click on the PROCA here, it corresponds to the GFF that was uh, uh, generated by PROCA. So if you look at it, you have several uh, arrows with, uh, with uh, rectangles. So if you zoom to one of them, so you just say that you want to zoom to this region, for example. And you can see uh, the different genes that were predicted in, in this region of the genome. So you can click on one uh, gene, for example, this one, UDPN, etc. So if you just click on it, you have some details on this gene. So you know the name that was predicted by Proca here. You know that it's a CDS coding sequence. You know its position, so it's on the positive strand of contig uh, number one here, not one between this position and this one. And it uh, it's almost uh, 1,000 base pair. Here you have the sequence of the, of the genes. So if you want to blast it, you can do it just by taking it or even uh, downloading it to your hard drive. And here you have a list of attributes that were in the GFF files that we saw at the, a, a bit earlier. Um, so if you look at it, you have, uh, for example, EC number, which is the enzyme uh, classification number. So if you, for example, select it and copy it and then um, search for it, maybe it will find it in Google. OK, so if you click on explasy.org, you have here. So this number is a specific number to this uh, UDPN acetyl glucosaminase 4 epimerase uh, enzyme, which is uh, registered in, on this uh, database. And uh, so it's very, a very standard way to represent the activity of the, of the gene. You have the name, uh, the standardized name of the gene, which is WBGU. 
you have an ID which was decided by Proca. Uh, also, uh, there is the inference. So how did Proca uh, name this gene like this? Well, it says that it used Prodigal in this version to predict the this gene on this genome. And it found um, this predicted gene to be very similar to the amino acid sequence of a well-known protein in the Uniprot, which is K, uh, this one. <laughs> so if you copy this one and search for Uniprot, this ID here, you will find uh, this page uh, which describe uh, the, the function of this uh, of this enzyme with a lot of details and other uh, similar protein in uh, other species. Okay, and then the locus tag is very similar to the ID. The phase is uh, not very relevant here. We know that this protein, this uh, gene will produce this UDPN acetyl glucosaminase 4 epimerase uh, gene. And that's it mostly. So it's a lot of information uh, which is uh, in the GFA file and represented like this in JBRAS. Okay, so uh, Congratulations, you've just finished this, uh, this small tutorial on uh, annotating a prokaryotic genome. So you can do exactly the same for any uh, genome of bacteria, for example, using uh, Proca. Thanks for listening.